stretching the back of the front leg and the front of the back leg, finding your front splits. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of On The Mat. Front splits is actually one of my favorite practices. And for that reason, I'm going to be putting myself on the mat. I like this particular theme, not because I'm proficient at this particular shape, but because when I started my practice, I had really, really tight hamstrings. I could not forward bend to save my own life. I would have to round my back like an angry cat and would only probably succeed in reaching my shins. It was just a very nice, persistent and consistent yoga practice that eventually opened my body up and transformed it to what it is today. So okay, let's begin our practice. Begin today's practice in child's pose. Bringing the knees and feet together. Resting the hips over the heels. Finding length in the spine as you bring the head down to rest on the mat. Arms down the length of your body. Palms facing upwards. Eyes closed for the first few moments to arrive on your mat. Bringing yourself to the here and now for your practice today. Connected to deep, long and regulated breaths. The inhale expands the ribcage. And the exhale pulls the navel inwards towards your spine and creates a firmness in your lower belly and pelvic floor. And starting to breathe as you move. With your next inhale, begin to rise up and lifting the arms overhead. With the exhale, gently lengthen the body all the way forwards and come down to the mat. Again, move with your breath, inhale. Rise up, open chest, open shoulders, arms overhead. And exhale with length, we come all the way down. Taking your time, not rushing, connecting, breath with movement. Inhale, rise up again. Good. And exhale, come down. Next, inhale. Find a deeper movement as you lift the arms up. Also come to a high kneeling pose. Exhale, connected with the breath, supporting the movement all the way back down. Again with the breath, inhale, rise up. Good. And exhale, come down. Stay with this movement. Inhale, five, four, three, two, and one. Exhale, one, two, three, four, and five. With the next inhale, bring the right foot forward in a half squatting position. Exhale with length, extending the arms forward. This brings you to a very gentle hip opening stretch in the right leg. Stay with the breath as you maintain the length of your spine. Good. Next inhale, bring the body back up again. Extending the right foot forwards. Exhale, lengthen forwards into a gentle hamstring stretching of the right leg. So if this feels really tight, you can bend the knee slightly to give more length in the lower back and give more space for the hamstrings to stretch more comfortably. If you feel you have space to deepen the stretch, you might even be actively flexing the foot and pointing the toes towards the head. The work of the breath to deepen this pose is to create length with every inhalation, guiding the crown of the head towards the big toe, and to create a depth of your stretch on the exhale. And we switch sides, bringing the left foot forward, half squatting position. Take a breath in to lengthen the arms upwards, 
and then all the way down to the mat on the exhale to create a gentle stretching in your left hip. Even as we hold the pose, we still are connected with our deep, long and regulated breaths. The breath is an integral part of the practice. Release, inhale, rise up again. Extending the left foot forwards. Exhale, come down, finding the stretching of your left leg. Stay for five, four, three, two, and one. Take your time to release. Good. Then rising up, tabletop pose, hands and knees position. And from hands and knees pose, begin to crawl the left fingertips forward as you slide the right foot back. And when you're ready, left arm lift, right leg lift. Extending from fingertips to toes, through the ball of the foot or to the heel. Actively lengthen your body and find your balance. And feel the engagement all along from the shoulders to the back to the glutes. Then begin to move as you breathe. Exhale, try touching elbow to knee. Inhale to lengthen outwards. Exhale again, connect this movement with your breath, touching elbow to knee. Inhale to lengthen away from each other, hands and feet. Third one, exhale and tuck. Inhale, extend and lengthen. Last one. Exhale and tuck. And that'll do. Take a breath in. Look up as you lift the tailbone to find a gentle back bend. Exhale, lower chest and chin down with the hips high. Takes you to Astanga Prana. Knees, chest and chin. Then lower the hips down with the legs extending back. Inhale to lift the heart in a baby cobra. And exhale, bring yourself back to tabletop. Hands and knees position. Crawling the right arm forward as you bring the left foot back. Inhale, raise the arm and leg. Good. As you balance your table, ensure that you are supporting the spine at all times by keeping the ribs in the body and maintaining a healthy lengthening of the lower back. As you lift the right arm, you are not lifting the right shoulder. As you lift the left leg, you are not lifting the left hip, keeping shoulders and hips stable and squared. Now move as you breathe. Exhale and tuck. Inhale and lengthen. Exhale and tuck. Inhale, lengthen. Again with the breath, bring elbow to knee. And with a beautiful inhalation, find your length. Last one, find that beautiful tuck. And bring hands and knees down to the mat. One breath to look up as you lift the tailbone, arching the spine. One breath to come down, chest and chin to the mat. Now for your next baby cobra, start to even lift the hands off the mat to find the engagement along the length of your back. Distribute this engagement and create lightness with your breath. Good. When you're ready, release and push yourself up to your first downward facing dog position. Moving the hips as far away from the hands as we can, bringing the spine to a beautiful length. And taking the first few moments to paddle out your feet left and right, heels and toes with one knee bent opposite leg straight. 
When you're ready, come up and tip toes, both feet straight legs, finding the lift of the tailbone, and then bringing heels back down, finding your perfect down dog shape that you are able to maintain at this point of your practice. Staying active in this pose, not collapsing, not stacking. And even as you hold the pose, you are not holding the breath. Inhale comes up to tiptoes. Exhale with knees to chest looking forwards. Inhale, we step forwards to the front of the mat. Exhale, we forward bend. Good. Rising up towards the ceiling, reach and lengthen upwards. Exhale, please bring the hands back down to the mat again. Now take a halfway left look up in the inhalation. On the exhale, please step your left foot all the way to the back of the mat and lower the left knee down for a low lunge pose. Inhale, extend your arms upwards, opening chest and shoulders. Exhale, allow the hips to sink into the expression of this pose, creating here a stretching in the back of the front leg in the front of the back leg. And then continue to breathe, but as you deepen your stretch, you are maintaining a beautiful support in the hips and the pelvic joints by hugging the outer hips in, by creating a gentle lift in the pelvic floor. Exhale as you place the hands down. Take the right foot back to three-legged dog position. Inhale and maintain this beautiful length you are creating in the body. So stay with the stable foundation of the palms that are always flat on the mat for the safety of your wrists. And as you lift your right leg, avoid lifting the right glute. Good. Now on the exhale, start to bring the heel of the foot to the hip and bring the knee forwards towards the chest in a strong tuck position that will awaken the front line of your body. Stay broad across the shoulders as you actively push the heart away from the mat and avoid the right foot touching the mat. Keep the heel lifted and close to the hip. Good, then when you're ready to move again, your next movement is to set the right foot down in front of you on the mat as you lift the arms up. Just like a low lunge, except now, back knee lifted from the mat, back leg straight. High lunge pose. Ashtachandrasana. Again, every inhale lengthens the arms upwards. Every exhale sinks the hip a little bit deeper into the expression of this pose. Exhale now, release. And again, step back the foot, this time to a plank pose position. Now as you lower, you can do a chaturanga, a low push-up, or a knees, chest, chin, followed by an upward dog or a cobra and complete the movement with the exhale in downward facing dog. Then come up and tip toes, inhale. Bring knees to chest, look forwards, exhale. Next inhale, walk forward to the front. And exhale, forward bend. Inhale to rise up, extending the arms upwards. And exhale, let's bring it back down to the mat for the opposite side practice. Take a halfway lift, look upwards. And exhale, stepping the right foot back and right knee down. Anjani Asana, low lunge. Take a breath in. Extend arms upwards. Take a breath out. As you sink a little bit deeper into this expression, please once again remember the engagement that will stabilize your hip and pelvic joints. The lift in the pelvic floor is also called Mula Bandha or the base lock. Stay for one more breath in this position. And then exhale as you release, step your left foot back, extending it upwards to three-legged dog position. Please keep the elevated leg active. You are lifting the knee, engaging the core. You either point or flex your foot, whichever feels more comfortable for the shin and calf muscles. You have your gaze directed at the knees or the navel. And you maintain a deep, long and regulated breath. Always aware today of the alignment of hip and pelvis. So let's bring that left knee forwards to a tuck. Exhale. And stay in this strong tuck position. 
awakening the front line of the body, activating the hip flexors, strengthening the shoulders. Good, and that will do. Set your left foot down on the mat in front of you. Rise up to the high lunge pose, also called the crescent lunge. Same movement in the hip. Unless the legs go wide apart in these poses, the stabilization we want in the hips and pelvis can be visualized as an inward directional movement in the opposite direction of the spreading of your legs. As the legs go out, the hips come inwards. That means actively pulling left hip back, pushing right hip forwards. Exhale as you release. Step back to plank and then one more vinyasa to downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, inhale tiptoes. Exhale knees to chest, look forwards. Inhale left foot, right foot, forwards to the front of your mat. Exhale forward bend. Now rise up with the length of your spine, extending the arms overhead. And again, come back down to the mat, staying connected with the breathing. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, left leg back, left knee down. Inhale, low lunge pose. This time on the exhale, pull your hips back to straighten out your front leg. Take a halfway lift from this position. Inhale. And then do a forward bend on the exhale. And bending the front knee, arms up on the inhalation. Stay with the breath, hands come down and right leg back. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, tucking knee to the chest with control. Inhale, take it to a high lunge pose. And again, pull the hip back to straighten out the front leg. Exhale. One inhale to halfway lift and square the hips. Exhale, forward bending. Inhale, then back to a high lunge pose. Exhale with the breath and then stepping the feet back to do one vinyasa or just arriving at downward facing dog. Good. Inhale comes up to tiptoes. Exhale with knees to chest and we look forwards. Inhale, perhaps you hop but land lightly please. Exhale, forward bend. Next inhale. Rising up, using your strong back muscles to support your spine. Exhale, forward bend again. Inhale, halfway lift, looking upwards. And exhale, it is the right foot back and the right knee downwards. Inhale, low lunge pose. Exhale, lengthen the front leg. Good. Inhale, halfway lift. Stay with your breath. Exhale, do a forward bend. Inhale with the front knee bent, arms upwards again. Beautiful. Exhale, step back to a three-legged dog position. Inhale, extend the leg upwards. Exhale, tucking left knee to the chest. Inhale, find your high lunge pose. And again, pull the hip back, straighten the front leg. Exhale, pyramid pose, forward bend. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, lengthening downwards. Good. Move as you breathe. Inhale, crescent lunge pose again. Exhale, now step back to plank. Elbows bent, doing one vinyasa to downward facing dog. Now stay in down dog. A few breaths. Allow then the breathing to come back to a regulated pace. Every inhale create length in the body. Every exhale, find your grounding and foundations in the four corners of the hands and feet. When you're ready, extend right leg up to three-legged dog position. Exhale, bring the knee to the chest in the tuck. As you set the foot down, this time ground the back heel inwards towards the center line of the mat. Turn to the left and extend the arms from fingertip to fingertip, directing the gaze over the right shoulder to find the expression Virabhadrasana 2, Warrior 2. 
Staying with the strong front leg, inhale, reverse your warrior. This means extending the right arm up and over to the left, allowing that left hand to crawl down your back leg today as we stay a few breaths. Exploring this side body stretch, exploring a lateral flexion in your spine and creating length. Good. Release and gently now. Place the hand down to the mat in front of you and next to the front foot. Pull back the hip to straighten the leg. Take a breath in, extend left arm upwards. Staying here, finding the expression of Uthida Trikonasana or extend the triangle. Or take your option to even today. You can bring that left arm back behind you, clasping the inner leg of the right thigh to find a half bound position. Now for the next transition, gaze downwards and you either crawl the fingertips one to two feet forwards in front of the foot or slide the foot for the back. Inhale as you extend the left leg up and find a balancing on the right foot in Ardha Chandrasana, half moon balancing pose. So today, if you feel stable in this pose, please explore grabbing the foot with the hand and kicking it upwards to find a chapasana, a sugar cane pose. Good, now with the hands down on the mat, square the hips like in a standing split. Tiptoe the bottom leg and try to bring the hip forward. Take a small hop from the bottom leg as you extend the top leg upwards. Switch the legs and gently bring yourselves down again. Taking an inhale for an upward facing dog and a downward facing dog on the exhalation. Good, left leg up, three leg dog. Exhale knee to the chest for your tuck. Setting the foot down in front of you and turning to the right with the arms extending Back heel grounding. Warrior two. From here, extending left arm forwards and then lengthening that left arm up and over to the right for a reverse warrior position, which you will hold and explore how deep you can go today in the lateral movement of your spine, crawling the right hand all the way down your back leg, staying light in the support of that hand. Good. And when you're ready, coming back up again to warrior two shape as they then bring the left hand down to the side of the front foot on the mat, extending the right arm upwards, maintaining both legs straight. In the triangle, you keep the chest in line with the hips. And today you might take the option to go deeper into the shoulder opening by coming to a half bound position with your right arm. So as you gaze downwards, please bend your front knee gently and bring the left hand in position or sliding that left foot back. And with the inhale, lift your right leg and find the balancing on the left. Ardha Chandrasana, extend the right arm upwards or take the option to hold the right foot with the hand and kicking it firmly to find the shape of Chapasana or sugar cane pose. As you lift the right leg upwards, try bringing the right hip downwards. This creates once again that stabilizing movement that will help support your hip and pelvic joints. One more breath in this position. And then let's prepare for our beautiful dynamic transition, jumping, switching the legs and coming back down to Chaturanga Dandasana. Of course, Feel free to take the option, just an option, to find a handstand along the way. Inhale, come up and tiptoes. Exhale, knees to chest. Next breath, please jump the legs through to land on the mat in a seated position. Dandasana pose. And then gently, gently lie flat on the mat. We will now practice the reclining variation of the pose that was explored in last week's basic level class. Bring the right knee to the chest, clasping the knee with the hand. Please pull towards the right shoulder. As you do so, 
Keep the left leg extending downwards. Good. This will be the first of a few movements. As you go through these movements, please be mindful to keep both your buttocks and both your shoulders on the mat. And keep the grounding of the lower back as well. So for your second movement, it is like a happy baby on one side. Clasping the foot with the hands. Bringing the knee to the outside of the body. Pull down on the feet which is stacked above your knee. To try to guide the right knee down as close to the mat as you can without the left leg leaving the mat. Next, while clasping the big toe with the peace fingers and thumb, you can use the left arm to keep the left leg down. And then with a nice inhalation, lengthen the right leg as straight as your hamstrings allow you to go. And if you are able to straighten it out, then gently, gently pull towards the upper body to deepen your stretch. Coming to the expression of Supta Parangustasana, the reclining hand to big toe pose. Switching the legs. And we try again, start with a very simple tuck position. And in this tuck position, you are already mindful to find the grounding of both your shoulders and both your glutes. Finding as well the grounding of the lower back and avoid the right leg lifting. Next, holding the foot to find your happy baby position on the left side. Good. Stay with the breath one day, perhaps your left knee able to touch the mat in this position. And when you're ready to extend your leg, you clasp the big toe with the peace fingers and thumb. As the leg extends, you avoid the left shoulder, leaving the mat. Breathe, and if it is slightly bent, it is slightly bent, it is perfectly fine. If you can fully extend, then you guide the leg upwards with a firm pull from the peace fingers and thumb. In a moment, you'll be doing this exact same shape, but from a standing balancing position. But for now, use the floor as a guide for your optimum alignment. Inhale, lift the head, neck, shoulders, chest, and start to move the legs. As you extend one leg up, lower the opposite leg down without touching the mat. Stay with the grounding of the lower back and keep the flow of the breathing. This movement will continue the work of strengthening, awakening, conditioning the essential muscles in your hips, connecting them with the core. As we stretch today, so too we will strengthen. Good. Let's do a few more. And then extend the legs vertical. And with a beautiful breath, rock your way up. Sending the legs back. And now we are face down in a prone position on the mat. And we will continue the work now to awaken the muscles. This time, the muscles along the length of your back. The back line of the body, also called the posterior chain. Inhale, extend the right leg up. As you lift the right leg, you are not lifting the right glute. This practice can be done with the arms tucked underneath the body. Keep the palms facing down, little fingers touching. Next breath, left leg up. Good. Stay strong in that lift. and Maintain the integrity of your breathing. Stay for one more breath. And that will do. As you lower down, prepare for both legs in three, two, and one. Inhale. You might even think about sliding your chin forward as you extend the legs upwards. Incorporate then the awakening, the activation, the contraction of all the muscles. And that will do. Exhale, release. Taking a moment, resting the body, releasing the tension in your back muscles in a child's Pose position on the mat. Good. 
when you're ready to move again. Return to downward facing dog position. Then take an inhale to rise up to tiptoes. Exhale with both knees bent, looking forwards. Next inhale you, walk, jump or float to the front. Next exhale, you forward bend. Take a breath in, lengthen upwards, opening chest and shoulders. Exhale, now bring hands down to the heart center. Inhale, bring your left knee up to the chest. Find that same tuck position you did when you were in a reclining pose. Stay balancing here. Ensure that your hips are level and square. Your pelvis is tilted in a neutral position. With one hand to the hip, one hand clasping the big toe. Take a breath in. Shoulders and hips squared. Exhale to extend your left leg, finding the expression of the standing hand to big toe. Udhida hasta padangustasana. Beautiful strength in the back and stability in the hips. This next transition is to swing the foot back behind the body and take the right arm up on the inhale. Holding this time the ankle of the foot. Exhale, strong kick of that back leg now. And allowing the strong kick of the back leg to counterbalance the body forwards. To find the expression of Natarajasana, dancer pose. As you lift that left leg, you avoid lifting the left hip. You try keeping the hips square. Good, lower down to your lunge, hand supporting. Inhale, arms go up, open chest and shoulders. Exhale, then spreading the arms as you turn to the left, warrior two. Inhale, switch your warrior two, opposite leg bent. Exhale, again with the front knee bent, lower all the way down to a retreating warrior. Next breath, turns the body to face the front of the mat, right foot to the corner, lizard pose. Good, and then gently lower down if you feel open enough to bring the forearms down to the mat. Perhaps even you reach the back leg with the right arm threading underneath the front leg. Stretching the back leg and deepening the stretch in the front here. Now release that back leg without dropping it, please. Place the hands on the mat, supporting body. As you now start to extend the right foot to three-legged dog, you are going to this time swing the leg up and over the body and towards the left. Right foot back, three-legged dog, inhale. Exhale, take the right hand off the mat as you step the right foot down behind you. With the inhale, lift the hips high, opening the chest, Extending the right arm, open shoulders towards the front of the mat, finding the expression of Kamat Karasana, while thing pose. And with the exhale, we flip back and send the right leg all the way forwards in front of you to bring you to Hanuman Asana, which we practiced in last week's essential level class. So please take the option here to support your right hip with a block underneath your thigh or glute if you are not able to come down fully just yet. And again, like what we mentioned earlier, the outward movement of the legs counter that with an inward stabilization in your hips. Right hip backwards, left hip forwards, and a healthy lengthening of both sides of the body. Left and right side feeling equal, equal, and inhale, extend the arms upwards. Maintaining length in both sides of the body ensures that left and right lower back is not going to be overworked by too much asymmetry of the pose. Now this next expression is like a reverse warrior position. Turn to the left, hold the back leg as high towards the ankle as you can with the left hand and extend the right arm. And this is the shape of dancer split which we will start to explore later but for now we do it from a seated position on the mat in Hanuman. So when you're ready, return to downward facing dog. 
and take a moment paddling out the feet, resting the legs. And inhale, coming up and tiptoes. Exhale with knees to chest, look forwards. Inhale, walk, jump or float to the front. Exhale, you forward bend. Inhale, you rise upwards. And then bringing hands down to the heart. Next breath, you lift the right knee up to a tuck. Take a few breaths, level and squared are your hips. Pelvis is a neutral position. Entire length of the body as if still reclining on the mat. When you create that stability, then place one hand to the hip and use the opposite hand to clasp the big toe with the peace fingers and thumb. Take a breath in, pull shoulders and hips back. Exhale to extend the leg to find the expression of Udhida Hasta Parangagustasana. Remember, your expression of this pose could mean that the knee is slightly bent. Your priority is a beautiful straight spine, neither leaning forwards nor back, and squared shoulders and hips. Stay for one more breath. Then when you're ready, flip the foot back behind you, extend the left arm upwards, and you are holding the back foot at the ankle. On the exhale, kick back strongly that foot to find the height of that leg and the body counterbalancing forward. But stay strong in the muscles in your posterior chain. You are also then finding the lift of the left shoulder and lifting your gaze can also help. Come to Natarajasana Dancer Pose. Good. Then as you release, the hands come down to the mat. And we rise up to a warrior two position. Warrior two facing the right side. Inhale. Good. Next breath, switch your warrior two legs. Turn to the right. Good. Turning to the left again. Left knee bends all the way down to a half squatting position. Retreating warrior pose. Revolve the body to face the front of the mat, stepping the left foot to the corner. Lizard pose position. Back knee resting. And take the option if you can bring the left arm underneath your leg. Reach back with the left hand to hold the back foot to increase the stretch in your back leg. Stay for five. Four, three, two, and one. Without dropping that leg, please lower it down. Good. As you extend left leg back to three like a dog, you will swing the leg up and over with control. Taking the left hand off the mat, setting the back foot down on the mat behind you. Inhale to lift the hips up, open the chest, extend your left arm towards the front of your mat. Kamat Karasana, wall thing pose. Expansion into the outward curve. Good, as you flip it back. Have that left leg come all the way forwards in front of you to find the expression of Hanuman Asana, monkey pose or front splits. As you slide the left foot forward, the, light, the left hip pull back. As you slide the right foot back, the right hip push forward. In this way, we level and square the hips. And ensure that left and right sit bone is equal, equal to maintain length in both sides of the body. And then it, only if it feels comfortable for both sides of the lower back, one side is not being overworked, extend the arms upwards, open chest and shoulders. Find the strength of your back in this position. Good. And today we take the right hand back, clasping at the leg, just like a reverse warrior. Extend the left arm up for a side body stretch. Beautiful. Note the position and where the hand is holding the leg. That will be exactly where you are going to be holding when you are going to attempt your standing variation of this pose.
release and let's place the hands down and the left leg goes back downward facing down taking a few breaths here to paddle out your feet inhale comes up to tiptoes Exhale, knees to chest, and with the next inhale, walk, jump, or float your way forwards to the front. Bring yourself to standing position, and prepare now for the intermediate level pose you practiced from last week. Standing, split, dancer split. The same way you enter dancer pose, but this time instead of holding the heel or the ankle or the foot, Hold that exact same place where you were reaching when you did your Hanuman variation earlier. Allow the body to come down just like a warrior tree. And as you extend the top leg, you kick it to keep it straight. And you find a squareness. Good. Take a few breaths. Try again, opposite leg. Once again, holding. Where the back hand was clasping earlier in your Hanuman variation. And then just like your dancer pose earlier, at your own pace explore, counterbalancing the body forwards until even it might be parallel with the mat. But keep the lift of the left shoulder, strong back muscles. If you keep the hips squared, left and right lower back will feel equal, equal. Create that feeling as best as you can for the safety of your back. Stay trying to kick the top leg straight. And then when you're ready, release. Beautiful. Holding the opposite elbows with the hands with the knees slightly bent. Gentle side to side. Rocking motion if that feels nice. Giving a release to that lower back. Releasing the tension from the practice. So when you're ready, let's sit down. Dhyana Virasana. Meditating hero pose. Crossing the right leg over the left leg with the knees together and the feet on either side of the hips. Spend the first few moments holding the feet with the hands and arrange your sit bones equally grounding. Take a breath in, lengthening upwards to sit straight. Next, crossing the right arm underneath the left arm, wrapping the arms together and bringing the fingers of one hand into the palm of the other. Staying here sitting straight or exhale to lengthen forwards all the way down. creating a beautiful stretch all along the back, releasing the tension from the practice, creating a counter stretching of the hips as well. Inhale, rise up and uncross the arms. Exhale to twist to the right, staying broad across the shoulders. You might use one hand to leverage yourself deeper into the twist and the opposite arm on the mat behind you, supporting a straight spine. Inhale brings it back again and let's switch sides. And your result might vary if you try that particular transition. So holding the feet with the hands again. Now your left leg is crossed over the right leg with the knees together. Both sit bones grounding. Then wrap the left arm underneath the right arm with the fingers of one hand into the palm of the other. And choose to stay here or lengthen the body forwards on the exhale to find a beautiful stretch along your posterior chain. Good. When you're ready, rise up and let's enter the next pose. Find your twist with the exhalation. Maintaining length in both sides of the body. Still actively regulating your breathing. Hold the pose and release. Good. Now sit towards the front of the mat, gently lie back and extend legs up vertical. Viparita Karani. Gentle inversion. This can be done with the knees slightly bent 
and the hands supporting the hips. Or take your option if you have a shoulder stand in your practice, then Saravangasana, lengthening the legs upwards, lifting the hips and stacking them over your shoulders. Supporting the back with the hands and keep the elbows here, hugging close together, finding then the foundation in triceps and shoulders. And please ensure that you keep the safety of your neck. You never turn the head left or right in this pose. And avoid bringing too much weight forwards towards the head. Stay on your shoulders and triceps and elbows. Take the option if you wish. You can gently lower the legs down to find Halasana, Plow Pose. To increase the shoulder foundation, you can start to clasp the hands together and even you walk the shoulders a little bit further underneath the chest. One vertebrae at a time. Please bring yourself down. Unwinding the body and spreading the arms and legs out comfortably wide with toes outwards, heels inwards, palms facing upwards and eyes closed. Taking rest in Shavasana. Thank you very much for joining this practice. Stay safe and keep practicing with joy in the body and peace in the heart. Namaste. And see you soon.